To honor and celebrate Mother's Day at 9.15 worship service, the fathers took charge of the nursery. <laughs> and Alexis, thanks to Alexis and Ed, they had eight or nine kids in the nursery. But Reverend Ron appointed me to preach on Mother's Day, so I'm here. But I'm he happy to introduce you as we focus on mission on this Sunday, a amazing, an amazing missionary to Korea from here. His name is Henry G. Appenzeller, and his wife, Ella, were selected as the first missionaries to Korea from the Board of Foreign Mission of the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1884 in company with Presbyterian missionary Horace G. Underwood, the Appenzellers set foot on Temurpo, a harbor in Korea on Easter Sunday, April 5, 1885. He was sent to bring the Korean people to the light and liberty of God's children. He spent 17 prime years of his life on missionary work in Korea until his tragic death in a sea while saving a little girl. He founded the first Methodist church in Korea called Jongdong Korean Methodist Church and many other Protestant religious institutions. He was politically defending Korean independence from other countries promoting democracy, built hospitals, and founded the first Western educational institution in Korea, Beje Hakdang, which was for the boys. His wife helped to build a first, the first school for the girls, giving them a chance to learn for the first time in the land of Korea. <clears throat> Appendale's biggest work was to translate the New Testament into Korean. He made a great contribution to the development and modernization of Korean society through its active involvement in education, medical treatment, and publication. If we understand how the mission works, we know that this was, was not just him and his work the Holy Spirit worked within him and through him. He had support from his family, fellow missionaries in Korea and also in Asia, and also in people, people of Korea working together. Another major support was the board of foreign mission of the Methodist Episcopal Church and the Methodist people in the U.S. who fully fund his mission and his family and hold him, his family and his mission fast in their prayers every day. So why did the Board of Foreign Mission of the Episcopal Methodist Church decide to send and fund someone all the way across the globe to this small unknown country? Why do we collect food, diapers, and donate money to people that we don't even know? Why do we gather together and pack 20,000 bags of meals and cheer after every thousand meals are packed? Why do we drive 12 hours to help build and paint a house for someone when we don't even have time and patience to paint our own houses? Why do we reach out and meet the needs around us? Why are we on a mission as a church? To answer that, it's just because that's what we are called to be. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 39. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourselves. 
And another scripture, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. As Jesus' disciples, it is our mission to love God and our neighbors, and we spread the good news to all people over the world. John Wesley guided us along this path as he emphasized many times about the love of God and the love of neighbor being hand in hand, that they must go together. In our Book of Discipline, paragraph 133, it says the United Methodists affirm the ministry of all Christians consists of service for the mission of God in the world. We seek to live lovingly and justly as servants of Jesus Christ by healing the sick, feeding the hungry, caring for the stranger, freeing the oppressed, being a compassionate presence, and working to develop social structure that is consistent consistent with the gospel we believe. Through our missions and services, we see the world from different perspectives. Do you remember when we had the Ukraine relief drive last year? We were shocked by what kind of things that they requested. Bandages, dressings, pain medicines, wound creams, medical supplies, and all the items that we sent to Ukraine really opened my eyes to see the sad reality of what it means to be in a war, war an actual war. When I contact the Capitol Hill UMC in DC in helping with uh, the asylum seekers, what they really needed was paid phones to make arrangement in the shelter in DC. They only take the arrangement by phones to call their relatives in the US and to have an interview with their jobs. They, what they really need was the paid phone to use. She also told me that all asylum seekers are given three pairs of new underwears when they arrive in DC because all they have is a few belongings in a little plastic bag. And if you do the math, if they receive 100 people on a bus in DC, which they do, 1,200 new underwears are needed every month to provide to the people who comes to DC. And which is just a one little thing that they receive from the people who is serving them. Our missions and services allow us to see and know the world that we have never seen and known before. Our mission makes a difference in people, including us. The General Board of Global Ministry is the worldwide mission, relief, and development agency of the United Methodist Church, working with partners and churches in more than 115 countries to equip and transform people and places for God's mission. Encore, when we collect money to send whenever there is a natural crisis, is a subgroup to the General Board of Global Ministries. If you look at the title of today's message, Muddy Boots and Sore Back, if you are being honest with me, who likes Muddy Boots and Sore Backs? You do? <laughs> You're just unique. <laughs> That's true. I personally don't like um, Buddy, 
boots or sore back. It's painful and unpleasant feeling, that's, and that's the reason I avoid exercising. <laughs> in today's scripture, Ephesians proclaims the unity of Jews and Gentiles in one house of God and spelled out real life implication of how we treat each other. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Therefore, as a prisoner of the Lord, I encourage you to live as people worthy of call you received from God. Conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love and make an effort to preserve the unity of the spirit with the peace that ties you together. So when I read the scripture, what it tells me that to live as people worthy of the call that we receive from God, we will encounter situations that we really need humility, gentleness, and patience, and love to get through. If you don't know if you are really gentle or patient, if there is no chance to really test our gentleness and patience. So I thought I was a very calm, peaceful, gentle, and patient person until I had kids. <laughs> when I faced myself and accept myself that I am not a calm, peaceful, and gentle person that I thought I was, I had to rely on God to help me to accept others and then myself with love. When we are serving others or on a mission trip, it often takes us to the places where we don't usually go and use our bodies in ways that we don't usually use. We may feel uncomfortable and sore, and I've been on a mission trip where there was no hot water running for the shower. And even the water tank was so small that we had to take turns and wait until to take this icy cold shower. And when we are tired from all this physical labors and work and uncomfortable in our surroundings, it is easy for us to become sensitive, lose our patience, and misunderstand others. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 to 13 says, His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ until we all reach the unity of faith and knowledge of God's Son. God's goal is for us to become mature adults, to be fully grown, measured by the standards of the fullness of Christ. We become mature and fully grown through these tough situations when we humble ourselves to see the world through other people's eyes. And when we put our shoes, ourselves, into other people's shoes, when we accept our limits and weaknesses, these become the real chances for us to be mature and grow strong in faith and accept others with love. It seems all I'm saying is being on a mission is difficult and serious, but usually it is also full of fun. The smiles and joyful moments in our missions are real, and people who have been to mission trip tend to go back and again, back and back, because um, they miss the fun and the rewarding times that they have in the mission field. I am really excited to join ASP this year while my mom and dad are here helping watching the kids. I know the time during the, the mission trip can be challenging, but it also can be so much fun and rewarding to getting to know other people and also myself. 
Our mission makes a difference in a country, in a community, and in a family. The seed of gospel that Appenzeller sowed in Korea with his love and service left this legacy. The Korean Methodist Church has dramatically developed as one of the major Protestant denominations in Korea. With the 2018 record, um, the denomination compromised 5,692 churches and 1.5 million Methodist members in Korea. The Korean Methodist Church became the church to send missionaries to other countries to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am standing before you as one of the pastors of Sovna Park UMC because of Appendellon's mission work in Korea and support from the people of Methodist churches in the US. My dad graduated from the Peje High School, which Appenzeller founded. And while he was studying in that school, he received this call to become a pastor and decide that he will be a pastor, Methodist pastor in Korea. I also received a call while connecting with the pastors from the Baltimore Washington Conference and decide to come to Wesley Theological Seminary in DC 11 years ago. My dad, after 40 years of ministry, retired last month from Korean Methodist Church, and I will be ordained as an elder in full connection at the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference in a couple of weeks. The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world by proclaiming the good news of God, God's grace, and following Jesus' command to love God and our neighbors. This mission is filled with grace, and this is our response to the kingdom of God in this world. God's grace is active everywhere at all time, carrying out this purpose as revealed in the Bible. And we are happy to be part of this great mission of the church. So this doesn't mean that you have to go to ASP this July and go to Costa Rica with Vim in August. If you can, that's great. I'm so happy for you. But this mission and service can always start here and right now. This is the bulletin. And if you see, there's always a way to serve in our bulletin. Help run slides, want to help serve communion, VVS updates, current Spain needs, and backpack bodies needs. You can buy and bring food items for these missions, backpack bodies or span. You can designate your offerings to special missions. You can volunteer at great missions that we have, like the garage sale, winter relief, rise against hunger, VBS. You can take the tags from the angel tree or cook food for the heaven's kitchen. Join our prayer group choir, bells, praise band, or just even say hi with a smile when you see a new visitor next to you. There are so many ways that you can make a difference and join in this great mission of the church. If you feel that you want to serve, that you want to be in this mission in our church, let us know. I'll be happy to find a place for you. And as Karen said to her volunteers at garage sale, we guarantee job security. <laughs> and we as the church 
are honored to serve you and serve alongside with you. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit working in us and through us to make a difference in this world. Give us strength and courage to love and serve you and our neighbors through our missions and our services. Amen.